Dog Gadgets. Live! Hi there! I'm Josh hey. from Brown Dog Gadgets, and with me as always is Pete over hey here. Hey there, producer Pete. How producer you Pete, uh, yeah. the double P. Uh, we're here today to make a really cool project. We are animating Legos, like this Lego ambulance, with our Blink Fade Board to give them fun light-up animations. So, as always, you can find a lot of our stuff at browndoggadgets.com, but we're here with the wonderful people from Make Magazine and Maker Camp. And, because they are such nice people, if you like the stuff that's going on, make sure you follow them at Maker Camp, Family Maker Camp. You can check out their events here, makercamp.com backslash events. And if you make something cool and you want to share it with them, hashtag make together. They also have a bunch of really cool projects up on uh, the Maker Camp uh, portion of the Make Zine uh, website. Yeah. So that's where I actually have this project as well. You can find this right up uh, step by step with diagrams and directions and a parts list on there or on our own website, browndoggadgets.com. So let's dive into this really cool project and talk about what we can do. So let's go to our overhead. Overhead. Doo -doo. So today we are doing a light up ambulance. And this is a Lego ambulance. And if I turn it on here, doo -doo -doo, there we go. Got little lighting effects going on. So what we're doing here, we're using our specialized crazy circuits components. It's these little guys right here. They are Lego compatible little electronic components that we make and manufacture, and they just pop onto Lego. We use our special nylon conductive maker tape to make electrical connections, and basically we're making a circuit board on Legos. It also works really well with conductive thread for sewing, and as Pete made up here, Pete made up this wonderful little ambulance, and it's using our one of our crazy circus parts to control a couple of just regular LEDs. And this is the project Pete made up literally this morning. Uh, and so if you want to make this project up, you can find that on our own website. We just posted the diagram up there. We'll post this up to the MakeZine uh, Maker Camp uh, website as well. But this is a nice little diagram Pete made up. So this would take an ATtiny85. Uh, you could program it or an Arduino. What You can use our... Crazy Circuits boards and parts here with regular LEDs to do the animation. Thanks, Pete, for making Yay. a really nice little no diagram. That was fun. It is. So let's dive into the parts we're going to need for this project. Uh, you're going to need some Lego. And we're doing a Lego ambulance, but you could add the same effect to a haunted house, uh, to a fire truck, to a Star Wars Lego stuff. Really, are, you can add little lighting effects to anything pretty easily with this setup in a variety of ways. We've done a haunted house as well as a project we made um, uh, last Halloween as a nice big fun Lego diorama with some animated lights. Mm -hmm. So at the core of it, we have two LEDs, a red and a blue, because it's an ambulance. We have our power supply, which is a little CR2032 coin holder. And last but not least is the most important part of this. This is our Blink Fade Board. Mm -hmm. Our Blink Fade Board is a pre-programmed uh, chip running some very simple Arduino code. Uh, it's an ATtiny85, as I mentioned before, if you really want to go into the super crazy specialized stuff on it. But it's a pre-programmed board that does two things. It blinks and it fades, as is our wonderful naming convention. It's a blink fade board. Uh, you can add up to five LEDs, some of our holes, as we have lined up in here and explained in our little sheet here. They blink and they fade. And the two on the side over here, the ones we're going to be using, they do an alternating blinking back and forth for that ambulance style back forth, back forth kind of LED. Our big uh, haunted house that we did, our, our Lego Halloween thing, used a lot of the fading uh, effects on there to do some nice little ghostly fades in and out, uh, along with some old school Lego ghosts that lit up, which were fun. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right into this. I, I like the term ghostly, ghostly fades. Ghostly fades. Ghostly fades. It's not a, not a really great basketball a shot. Ghostly fade. <laughs> That's a technical term. It's Casper. When Casper plays basketball, Casper. he does a ghostly fade. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to hook things up. Now, we're using our nylon conductive maker tape. This stuff is really cool stuff. It's literally a nylon ribbon that's conductive as opposed to, say, mm -hmm. copper foil. The nice part about this stuff is it's extremely strong and durable. And so we can use it very easily on Lego, both putting it on and taking it off again. Uh, do right angle folds and do nice pressure fits with our parts. If you're going to be doing this with, say, copper foil tape, you could totally do that with a on paper. However, copper foil is a lot weaker and isn't reliably conductive on the bottom, unlike our maker tape is. And you might have a really hard time hooking up to our blink fade board or getting your battery to make a connection. Because, uh, again, that copper foil is not conductive on top and bottom. It rips really easily, too. That's yeah. nice. It's kind of fragile. And, oh, before I forget, because I always forget this until the very <laughs> end. If you need these supplies, 
These are all found in our starter kit, our Crazy Circuit starter uh, kit, which you can find at makershed.com. Uh, and you can also find it on a lot of other variety of stuff, including our own website. But uh, if you want to support Make, you can go to makershed.com and pick this guy up right now. And it has our blink fade board, LEDs, um, batteries, the whole nine yards, even a nice big Lego, green Lego base plate in there as well to make up the activity. So you can find those parts in there and make this little guy up or a couple of these guys up using the Crazy Circuit starter set. Yeah. So let's jump right into this now that we've finally hidden all those, those talking points, which I always forget about. So we just have to basically figure out how we're going to hook things together. You can use a diagram we have uh, on our, web, our website or the uh, Maker Camp write-up, which shows you how to hook this together, uh, which I'm not going to use because I've done this enough. <laughs> and so we're just going to line up our parts to make sure we have everything in the right spots. I know where everything's going. And we're done for that one. It, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah. That's it? It's not much work. Uh, Josh, I, I know people often do, you know, if you design a circuit board, that's one thing. But if you do breadboarding, that's another. Is this Lego boarding? What do you call this exactly? Legoing. Le Lego, <laughs> Legoing. Um, it really is. You're doing a Lego breadboard. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah, with conductive tape on Lego. It's a, it's a weird middle ground between a circuit board and a breadboard because a circuit board is just copper on PVC plastic. That's really all it is, uh, fiberglass. Uh, we're just doing conductive tracings on plastic with pegs in it using the same components. I was going to say, if you make this exact same project on a home-built or manufactured PCB, a circuit board, it'll use the same components in the same <laughs> the same hookup, the same circuit. Like everything is pretty much identical, just we're using good old Lego for that. And actually, this isn't in Lego. This is a generic... Uh, Lego compatible boards off of Amazon that I'm using brick. for this. Is it some sort of brick device? Uh, <laughs> brick, brick center. So anyway, so this is our hookup. The big thing you have to look at with this kind of project with our Crazy parts are that uh, the holes that have the white silk screening over it, those are always your negative, your grounds. So we're going to connect all those together one way or the other. And when I put this together, there are literally four or five different ways that are, you could probably think of the top of your head, how to hook these things appropriately together. I'm just going the most easy and obvious route, but there's a lot of ways to make this project work by using different grounds, different connection points. There's a lot of ways of doing it. I'm just going the really simple and easy route to make life life easy for me. So first and foremost, we're going to be spending a good chunk of our time cutting little strips of tape here and measuring things out. And I'm going to be a little bit quick about this. So we're not spending all day doing it. So we just kind of measure out. I always kind of eyeball it and then trim later. But we're just going to be applying the tape directly to the Lego and then laying our parts on top. So there's a little bit of uh, measuring involved, but uh, yeah, it's not too tough. I think the hardest part about this activity for some people is getting the uh, the backing off of the tape sometimes. Like I cut my fingernails the <laughs> other day and I'm just like, darn it, I'm doing a live stream of this. I do like to get it started on the roll and then just kind of leave a little piece, you know. Yeah. Hang on, there's so helps. there's this, and we have a it's pretty forgiving too, and that's there's not have to be a super exact way of doing it. So I'm just applying it and pressing down with another piece or a piece of Lego to make sure we get a little bit of uh, indent in it before I apply my parts. And I'm just hooking my battery holder in a very easy way. My battery holder has our grounds on the side here, and the right side is labeled three volts for our three volts of positiveness. It's a very positive, positive board. <laughs> Josh, I think you um, mentioned, I think we mentioned this before, but because the tape is uh, conductive all the way through and on both sides, if you do cut a piece too short, you can just add on, make a longer piece by laying another piece on top and sticking it right down. Exactly, which is nice, especially for kids, because let's be honest, we all make mistakes when it comes to stuff like this. So there you go. Ta-da! Now, if I was doing this on my ambulance, I'd be doing the exact same thing up here. This is one I made literally years ago. Took it out of our, our uh, display area. It's really badly folded on a couple sides here, but it's the same approach. I'm using a battery holder down in here just for convenience of, of making this. I've also made this exact project where I'm just running tape down inside for a CR2032 holder as opposed to the screw terminal. This just makes it easier for trade shows and lasts a lot longer off double A's as opposed to a coin cell but it's the exact same circuit we're making this way as we are on here. This is just a lot easier for, for video, that's for sure. Let me just make sure I'm in focus too there. All right, good. So that's good. Our blink fade board, okay, everything lines up. Our 
our positive in and our ground, great. So now I've got to connect my Blink Fade board to my LEDs. Now, uh, first and foremost, I am going to use this little scrap piece I have here to connect my two grounds, just because I have a scrap piece. Uh, I always see my little bits of, of Lego uh, tape or, or maker tape so I can use it for stuff like this. So there we go, I got that. I just got to apply two pieces of tape to go from here to here and here to here, and about that much. By the way, if you have any questions about this, let us know. And you're probably wondering, hey Josh, this is pretty simple, but I am a master Lego builder. Uh, I do all sorts of crazy high-tech Lego stuff. Well, we just did a live stream yesterday. We used one of our bigger boards, an Arduino board, to make a Lego maze. Actually, we're going to roll that footage right now because it is pretty cool looking. All right. uh, we also still have it loaded into our software. <laughs> but this is just us using an Arduino and a servo to do Lego stuff. You ready? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's Show that off it. while I'm... I'm... So this is just a, a Lego a Lego maze that we put together um, using a, a Lego compatible servo that we carry. And our robotics board. If you wanted this, you could find this in the robotics kit that, that we also produce, the Crazy Circus Robotics Kit. It comes with all of these components, including the Lego servos. That can also be found on makershed.com. That's the robotics kit. It comes with two of those Arduino boards, uh, servos, and uh, LEDs and other components. So you can make a couple Lego mazes. But Lego maze is fun. It just is uh, as a timer built on the gate. So anyway, this is the yeah, We've done this. Everything is hooked up right. I'm using pins three and four, which are alternating blink. I've got my, my uh, LEDs in place. Sorry, allergies are killing me here in the Midwest. So uh, I'm just rubbing my nose with allergies from ragweed. Just wash, wash your hands. That's true. Yes, no one else touched my Everybody latest. wash your hands. Now I've just got to go from my one of my grounds here to one of the grounds somewhere on this project. I go to the top corner here, but I'm just going to go down to this guy just to make a little bit of some interesting right angle folds with everything. So I'm going to come down over and then back again with this. So I'm just going to cut a much longer piece of tape for convenience sake. There so I Josh, for people who haven't laid out a circuit before um it's kind of a fun like little puzzle or challenge to figure out where the wires or the tape i guess is, is going to go to route around things uh sometimes uh we do a trick where we uh run tape in the channel between the little oh, yeah. little studs if we want like a two-layer board as it were it'll fit between yeah that's a nice part about the our eighth inch tape it really does i'm gonna do it this makes life easier for me there we go uh, yeah, it will run between the Lego studs as well as on the top of it. So we can make, yeah, as Pete mentioned, a two-layer circuit board. Now, Lego being a nice three-dimensional uh, product, you can literally run tape over one piece of Lego and another using more up and down. I've had some people make some weird three-dimensional like multi-layer circuit boards with stuff just because they could. And more power to them. Uh, we just tend to do some little minor jumps. If you plan things out, you shouldn't have to worry about doing too many jumps on things. It's when you have a small area with a lot of parts. Like we have a couple potentiometer parts and just trying to line up several potentiometers in a row. The common ground is just easier to common ground in a channel, running off of that left and right. And that makes life so much easier for, uh, for project building. So now I'm just going to take my last couple of parts, my bling fade board here, which is all... Yay, everything is good, pops on, put my red on. And again, I have to make sure to just line up my positives and negatives. They're all properly oriented. Ta-da! That is literally the same thing we made here. I should say we, Pete made here. Pete, good job, it's Pete. We. we work together. There we go. This is the exact same uh, project. Again, Pete did it slightly differently. I'll move this here to the center a bit more, where he has his positive and negative, then the negatives, or so the two positives here coming off the three and four holes. The negatives coming back out this way. I just it, there's so many ways of doing it, but it, it's the exact same project. This is the exact same project. Just it's different ways of wiring things up. Get that out of the way. So all I gotta do is add my battery here and blank, blank, animation. Blank. Yeah. I've added simple animation <laughs> to this project. Now, if I wanted to go further, I could use that robotics board and have a nice full-on Arduino. We have a couple different programmable boards with different features. And we have a micro bit board coming out later. Uh, but this add easy programming, easy lighting effect, easy, easy servos, add sensors in. 
Um, and even that um, that Lego maze uses a metal ball bearing, which activates acts as a push button. It runs over a couple pieces of tape side by side. When it rolls over, it activates the the program. Gate goes up. There's so many ways you can do this. So many ways. Uh, so before we go, any, uh, we finish things up. Uh, we'll go to a close-up view. I just want to show the Blink Fade board up close on our close-up camera. Close-up camera. Here we go. Close-up camera. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually working. Yay. <laughs> so many problems with our close-up camera. There we go. But you can see, not a whole lot going on. We've got our zero, one, two, ground, uh, positive ground, ground to the bottom, three and four. And this is, yeah, this is a little pre-programmed chip. It works. Can we see the bottom as well? The bottom has. And that's a That's a surface mount. Uh, chip, right? It is, as so opposed yeah, to on the bottom. our jumbo LEDs, which are actually through hole. Yeah. Um, nicely soldered by some factory workers. Uh, we we don't do that anymore. It's, but even on the bottom, you see we have those rings on the bottom. So we just that's where the nice strong connection. And actually, the inside of these holes too are plated copper. Yeah. That's where the um, the pressure fit connection happens with the crazy circuits components. So there we go. So that that's the project. That's uh, the whole kit and caboodle. What else we got? Any other yeah. questions? We have a lot of people uh, making comments. Um, yeah, we had. Well, someone said we got a little bit of uh, echo from two mics, but I turned echo, it down. Echo, echo. I turned it, <laughs> turned it down a little. That's why Pete's an uh, amazing producer. He's like, oh. Yeah. We got Timmy, Timmy73. Howdy, everybody. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Oh, this is, you'll like this one. This is a good comment. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some very nice red and blue dots. That's a great comment. That's as me, a colorblind that. person, saying, you go red and blue. Those are definitely colors. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Carlos this is a great gadget. Thanks, Carlos. I mean, gadget, gadget's in, in the name, right? It is. Now, we've, we've done so many different versions of stuff with this. We've done a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer that has a um, fading in and out nose. That was a both a paper craft and also a sewing project on felt using... A blink fade board for the fading aspect of there because it's oh it's green on a green screen uh, let's get this that doesn't work so well let's uh not the overhead uh no that's cool yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah uh we've done uh let's see here other fun things with the blink fade board uh just a bunch of paper craft and sewing things we've added just simple lighting effects to um even like little lego city homes where we had like a light just blink or something fades slowly in and out uh, we've also done um, with the Guardians of the Galaxy ship that I purchased <laughs> off eBay. It's a very, very, very nice Guardians of the Galaxy ship that I was going to use a Blink Fade board to add some little running lights on it. Well, actually, we did that with a Kylo Ren TIE Fighter, too. We have a video up on our YouTube channel where we, we, we added a Blink Fade board and LEDs to give Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter just some, like, blinking red lights on it, uh, which worked pretty well. Um, but you can do a lot with just simple blinking and fading. Uh, just simple, simple lighting effects. And especially for the smaller Lego kits or just one point of light, it works really, really, really easily and really well to run that power. And running off a coin cell battery will last you a day. It, it'll last us a full trade show day off a single coin cell. Ah, Carlos, you make a very good point. Well, Carlos, we don't sell you the Legos. We sell you the electronics. Because I always assume somebody has a gigantic tub of Legos. Like, we literally have a huge tub of Legos on the floor next to us um, at home. Uh, if you want to get, like, a specific Lego kit, there are Lego City sets that have, like, ambulance and emergency vehicles. Uh, if you want a specific, like, this is a 90s ambulance. I got a couple of these off eBay for, like, $15 for nice little kits. Um, they have a nice flat area on top that you can add your electronics if you take off some of the, um, the embellishments on top. Or if you want to be that Lego person, you can just make your own ambulance from your own Lego parts because this is a pretty simple, it's a vehicle. I, I kind of joke, it's Lego cars are kind of the first thing anybody makes because they have wheels, you have Lego parts, they're, they're a rectangle. Um, they're really easy. So you can just make one yourself. Uh, but there's tons of Lego emergency vehicles out there from airplanes to helicopters to ambulances, both currently being sold and... Um, you know, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, etc. We can grab stuff like this, or you know, your Lego Star Wars stuff. I think you could turn any Lego vehicle into an ambulance with the blue and red blinking lights. There's also the wonderful, like the Chinese knockoff. Well, not knockoff because Lego is no longer under uh, a patent. Um, so you get Lego compatible stuff, or like your Mega Blocks, or your Lepin from China, who makes uh, very great Lego compatible stuff, or the board I have down here, which is from Strictly Bricks, I believe, here in Wisconsin, yeah. uh, Appleton, nice. Wisconsin, I think. They're nice people. Um, but, 
you know, you can get all sorts of Lego stuff. I know the Lepin company has a ton of emergency vehicles. They're, they're Lego compatible, just Lego figs that look different. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I always like that like, Lego Star Wars or sci-fi stuff looks really nice with blinking lights on it. Yeah. You know, people put a lot of effort. I know there's a huge market out there, Carlos, um, especially on eBay for like the high-end Lego stuff, like taking like Lego uh, Ghostbuster Ecto-1s or Star Destroyers and then adding like a hundred dollar lighting kit with little tiny LEDs, and yeah. it's an insane amount of work. Like they're adding lights inside of the Lego bricks. Yeah, um, that's way too much work for me <laughs> or most people. And I always tell people like, if you're a kid or an adult, you wanted to add some simple lighting effects, you can hide these runs of of conductive tape. We've done that with projects where we've just run it between the studs or behind things. And you can do a nice job of hiding things and. It's easy, it's simple, it's inexpensive is the big one. Yeah. And you have to, you have to spend all day worrying about little tiny, 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 tiny LEDs with little tiny like hair thin wires. Um, but I mean, we have an Ecto-1 on table in the other room that we're going to add some LEDs to just for fun. Like blinking lights like this, maybe a light on the inside, making a Slimer light up. Um, but yeah, you can just add LEDs to anything or we have piezo speakers, the uh, mo um, servos. We got a lot of things you can do. It just depends on what you're looking for. And yeah, we don't like selling anything beyond um, these Lego base plates, which aren't going to show up well because of green screen. That's right, they don't. Uh, Josh, what, what other color LEDs do we have? Oh, well, Pete, we have a wide range of LEDs. In fact, we have actually seven LEDs uh, so, these so. days. We have in our big 10 millimeter ones, these uh, big ones, um, big gumdrop si sized ones. We have uh, blue, green, white, and red. We also have a color changing one as well, Ooh. which wouldn't work with a blink fade board because it just add power it changes color naturally right right uh, we also have surface mount versions of these like nice little thin flat ones work, which work really 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 well if you're using um clear legos so you can put one of those below a clear lego and it makes it light up really well yeah and we have uh white blue green red and yellow eventually changing that to color changing mm -hmm. we also have an rgb led and we have a neopixel led as well so you want to go we really 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 high tech which is why we have a, a Tron Legacy Lego set in the <laughs> other room to add like nice um, Arduino controlled lighting effects. You can chain a bunch of them together, add some fun running lights, cool lighting effects galore. Mm -hmm. And those are uh, the Neo Pixels, the uh, individually programmable, individually addressable, there we go, Yes. Um, LEDs, which are really cool and high tech and really inexpensive. And those are like yeah. a two by three size and daisy chain together. I, I was asking about the color. We have a comment here, so, so I, Chris maybe is in a different country, so it's weird seeing ambulance with blue. So, you know, depending on where you see your ambulance locally, the colors might be different. You know? Yeah, I actually, I, I'm pretty sure red and blue is what we have for emergency yeah, vehicles he here in the only, States. Only police have blue. Oh, really? So I thought ambulances had blue, too. I, guess, I don't know. It depends, I guess, what era yeah. and <laughs> what country, maybe. Well, that's know. why you have many colors to yeah, choose many from. many colors to choose from. There you go. Or you could, you know, make a police car with this, you know. You could. <laughs> there you go. Wee -oo, wee -oo. Uh, whatever you want. I mean, we got a fire truck over here too. I've just been to put together. Same thing, just a nice big flat area on top. Add LEDs. Yeah. Yay. But there's, I mean, so many different ways you can use these components to add to your existing Lego projects mm -hmm. or go like further with them. And since, I mean, there's just so many Lego sets these days and they keep pumping out more and more. Shoot, adding LEDs, like lighting effects to a Harry Potter Hogwarts castle, which was a really gigantically cool big set. I have my childhood um, pirate ship. Um, Arrgh. Yeah, but adding, like, a, a light up in the inside of the cabin. Just a nice little, like, accent light on the inside. Battery and uh, battery holder LED. Maybe a switch to make my life easier, but it doesn't take much to add that in. And it's simple and easy to remove when you're done. Um, that's the best part. You're not going to hurt anything by adding the tape on. It peels. Comes right off. Peels off yeah. pretty easy. And just... Grab a corner and zip it all it. comes off. So any other questions before we head out today? Because it's about no. lunchtime for us. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We're glad you came by. As always, I'm Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets here with Pete, Hello. our producer. Um, and uh, if you want to find out more about these cool projects and whatnot, check out all the fun things at, well, browndoggadgets.com. But also Maker Camp, all those fun things. Find these uh, crazy circuits kits at makershed.com. At Maker Camp family, Everywhere. family Maker Camp. There we go. I'm chasing this Pete's moving things around. Uh, 
makercamp.com backslash events to find more of these events. I know they're doing live streaming most days. We're going to try to do something every week or every other week with them. We try to live stream like three, four days a week here from our own channels. But if you make some cool projects, hashtag make together, post that to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because everyone likes seeing projects, especially make a cool Lego project. Very cool. There you go. Yeah. Um, Or, you know, do a cool paper craft project. There you go. Because paper crafts are just as fun. And yay, green screen catching this guy. But (laughs) I mean, adding this to conduct a sewing project. Shoot, you have a really cool ambulance T-shirt. Use conductive thread or our conductive tape on fabric, and oh, you're yeah. good to go. And that's uh, our maker tape, which does come in our cool starter sets. Give me the whole. The more you know. <laughs> Catching the green screen off of our our printed material there. Um, there you go. But yeah, makershed.com has uh, pretty much all of our products. Everything from the starter set up to bigger ones. You want to make a Arduino compatible thing? Try the deluxe set or the robotics set. Um, but yeah, we got tons of stuff. Check it out, uh, makershed.com. I'm Josh at Brown Dog Gadgets. Yeah. Pete, we're going to get out of here and have we'll lunch. Roll those credits. Thanks. Thanks Take care, everybody. everybody. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please visit browndoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at Brown Dog Gadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.